Man, I'm getting all excited. It's, it's my turn, and I forgot my microphone. I got it so excited. David was probably hoping that it wasn't working today so he could take a nap. Because <laughs> I know he was here this early this morning. So, uh, is it working? Can you hear me? I got her on. Hello, hello. Speaking. One, two, one, two, one, two. I don't know about y'all, but I had a, a good little Thanksgiving break. Uh, we decided that we would just stay home and, and uh, just have some family time. And we had some awesome... God conversations. Um, one of the days we snuck down to uh, Shipshuana real quick and um, had lots of God conversations that that created. Um, Oliver wanted to know why everyone was matching, and uh, then it gave them ideas why, why we should be matching. And I went, uh, not quite, Oliver, not quite. And uh, it stirred in Autumn's heart as she loves the Lord. It stirred in her to ask all kinds of God conversations, why we would ever go to a place that doesn't blatantly love the Lord, and, and just, it just, it started a lot of good conversations about it, um, which I thought, the Lord is always working. I love how he does stuff like that. We never think of, of those, and the Lord stirs in their little hearts, and so we had awesome conversations on the way, on the way back, that's for sure, um, and so it was really neat how the Lord works, even in some of those little trips, um, and so it was just a special time. And uh, the other part I wanted to focus on this week was I just looked at, um, just thinking about all the shoe boxes as y'all as a church came together and just wanted another reminder. It was in the bulletin last week, but 120 shoe boxes. So let's, woo, let's give a round of applause. That's awesome. <laughs> just think about all the little kids that are going to hear the gospel through a simple shoe box. Um, that's awesome. Uh, I, I even remembered in, in uh, some places even you actually use your old shoe boxes. And uh, good thing I got big feet because we could use a big shoe box, right? You can get more in a big shoe box. Um, sorry, Sid, you couldn't get as much in your shoe box. Um, so I just, I just love that. It's a neat ministry, um, and it's a simple ministry to be a part of, too. And so I just, um, as you keep thinking about it, just think about what we can do even next year. Um, it'd be awesome to go ahead and... and uh, beat that number next year. Um, also, last week, I picked on Kenny a lot last week, Kenny Purvis, and so I said, man, I need, I need to work on some of y'all too, okay? So just be careful, Louie, okay? Just be careful. I, I mean, whoop, that came out. I apologize, and so um, just, I got to pick on someone else, so you better be careful. Um, the other two, as a reminder, is I wanted y'all to look at, don't forget to check your bulletins, and we have, um, we're still doing uh, worship practice tonight at 5 p.m., I believe, and so if you all could be a part of that, uh, that would be awesome as we get ready for Christmas and uh, share Jesus through that. So please turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 8, verse 26. Luke chapter 8, verse 26. Then they sailed to the country of the Gadeans, and where it is opposite of Galilee. And when he stepped out on the land, there met him a certain man from the city whom had demons for a long time. And he wore no clothes, nor did he live in a house, but in the tombs. But when he saw Jesus, he cried out, fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with you? Jesus, Son of the Most High God, I beg you, do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirits to come out of the man, for it had often seized him, and he was kept underground, under guard, bound with chains and shackles, and he broke the bounds and was driven by the demons into the wilderness. Jesus asked him, saying, What is your name? And he said, Legion because of the many demons had entered him. And then when they begged him that he would not command them to go out into the abyss, now a herd of many swine were feeding there on the mountain. So they begged him that he would permit them to enter them. 
and he permitted them. And then the demons went out of the man and entered the swine, and they had ran violently down the steep place into the lake and drowned. But when those who fled from them saw that what happened, they fled and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what had happened and came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in the right mind, and they were afraid that they also who had seen it told them by what means he he who had been demon-possessed was healed. Then the whole multitude of the surrounding region of the uh, Gadardeans asked him to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear, and he got into the boat and returned. Now the man from whom the demons had departed begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your own house, and tell what great things God has done for you. And, and he went his way and proclaimed throughout the whole city what great things Jesus has done for him. Y'all, let's pray. Dear Lord, as we get into this passage and, and we see the work of Jesus. We see the work of Jesus and seeing a man who is taken over want to stay with Jesus and follow Jesus and be under his teaching and leading and, and Jesus told him no to go home. Lord, some of us, you have gifted us to share your goodness and your grace that we would listen to you and that we would go forth and share the great news. That we don't need to keep sitting but we need to go and serve and be doers and live it out and share of your goodness. Lord, give us your confidence, your peace, your understanding to share your story with those around us. Amen. As I was just studying this week and just getting excited about uh, this passage and, and uh, just getting into it and uh, just seeing that, that Jesus has control over even the spiritual realm. Man, we look at, we look at this and you get into the part where the demons were scared or fearful of Jesus tormenting them. I mean, the demons were, 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 were worried. They were, they were fearful. That, Don't torment us. They, they, were, they were fearful of Jesus. And then I pause this week and I go, man, why aren't men and women more fearful of Jesus? Of the works and what He can do and what He can minister and change and and grow and do beautiful things within our souls, within our lives. But yet these, these demons, legion, there, there was a sense of understanding. They knew exactly who he was and who he was about. And I had to pause this week and think about that. I said, man, that's interesting. That even the demons are fearful, yet they can't receive Jesus. But man can't, my, mankind can receive Jesus, and there's many who don't want him. Many that turn away, many that, that says, I don't need that. I got all that I need in the world. They don't get it. They don't see it. Man, it just breaks my heart when I just see those who, who don't want to receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. But yet there's demons who recognize Jesus instantly, right away. They didn't have to ask who he was. They knew who he was right when he got out of that boat. And I just thought that was interesting. Very interesting. So verse 28, when he saw Jesus and he cried out and fell down before him with a loud voice and said, what have I do with you, Jesus, the son of the most high God? I beg you not to torment me, for he had commanded the unclean spirits to come out of the man, for it had see, often seized him and he was kept under guard, bound with chains and shackles, and he broke the bounds and was driven by the demons into the wilderness. I mean, the other part is I was processing through the scripture of, of how the demons had control over man, but the man had no control over the demons. The man had no control over the demons, right? But the demons had control over man, but Jesus tops them all. Man, Jesus has control over all. Man and demons. So he has over to the, the, the spiritual world and the physical world. Jesus has control over both. He has, he has control over both. And do we place both in his hands? 
Do we rest in the peace that Jesus brings us? Do we see that Jesus has the authority and the power over our flesh and our he- and also over the spiritual part of our lives? Do we rest in that? Do we see that? That Jesus has the power and authority over both. He can tell the demons where they can go and where they're going. And he can speak to our souls and break us down to understand that what Jesus did for us on the cross. To open our eyes to see the gospel for what it really is. Man, I love that we can see the power of Jesus in this. And that Jesus does the will and he wants to minister to us. He wants to minister to us. He wants to speak to us. He wants us to see Him and and to see His goodness and to see His glory. Man, if He didn't, then he He would have just kept rowing, right? He would have moved past this man. But He stopped and He took the time to minister to this man who was taken over by the demons of the world. And He ministered to him. Do we ever stop and think that he's doing the same with us? That he stopped because we have spiritual things going on in our lives or coming, right? Last week we talked about the coming and going of, of the different storms we're in. And Jesus is in the, in the boat with us and he's in the storm with us. And, and we have spiritual things going on. That Jesus is stopping and ministering to us where we're at. That Jesus is trying to get our attention. He's trying to get a hold of us. He's trying to move and he's trying to direct or are we listening are we are we too busy with the storm are we are we too busy are we too distracted with with the, all the things that are going on where are we at as Kenny said this morning about reflecting on our hearts I pray as we look through this passage that we would reflect in our hearts of what Jesus is doing, that Jesus is wanting to minister to you and not wanting to, He is ministering to you. Are you open to that? Are you open to that? Do you see it? Do you see Jesus ministering to you? Do you see that the world is impacting on us? That the world and, and these demons are, are, are doing a work on this man. And I had to stop this week and think, man, do we stop and, and really focus enough? Is the world penetrating our lives? Is the world penetrating our families? Is the world penetrating our grandkids, our neighbors? Man, are we letting the world penetrate deeper and deeper? Are we giving more and more of ourselves over, right? Because as this man was taken over by these demons, we can see that man, he was taken over. It had him fully. The demons fully took him over. And then I, I, I was processing this week of going, man, it's, it's true. The world can take us over. The world can take us fully over and get us fully distracted. Not to the point where you're naked and running around. I hope not anyways. Um, otherwise, we got bigger issues to work through. Um, but it's true. Men, men we, can, we can fully allow the world to take us over and because we got so much baggage, we got so many things going on, we're, we, have, we, we just have so much going on. You know, I think of even the, the, the topic of storms last week leading into this as Jesus is <coughs> getting to the other side, coming out of the boat, of coming out of these storms, is sometimes we get so stuck in the stress and the worry of storms that that we focus so much on just that alone and we don't see that Jesus is in the boat with us and ministering with us, ministering to us. Man, we get so stressed out and we get so overwhelmed and, and we go to the world. I think of, man, just, uh, I heard about just this week, someone who, when they get stressed and they get worried, they go straight to uh, drugs. They go drugs or they go to medication. And I'm not saying that we can't have imbalances of our flesh, right? I'm not saying that. But I am saying that we lean so much on the world and less on Jesus that when we get stressed and we worry, we don't go to Jesus. We don't go to the cross. We don't go to the one like that can get rid of the demons in our lives. 
we go to the world, we take medication. We need we just more. I can't sleep at night. I need more drugs. But why don't we go to Jesus while we can't sleep at night? Why don't we go to the cross and, and have and ask and search our hearts and see what we can give over to Jesus? Do we not believe he has the power and authority to work in our lives? No, we just push him aside and we say, I, want, I need some more medicine. I need some more drugs. I, I need this. And we push Jesus over like he has no authority, he has no power. But we see from Scripture and we believe that it's real and it's, and it's active, right? We believe that Jesus is alive. We believe that Jesus is a real person. So why can't we believe that Jesus has the authority to strip demons from a man and send them into to swine? Why do we struggle so much with trusting and leaning and, and listening to his authority than we do small g, gods, or a.k.a. doctors? Why do we lean so much into our doctors than we do our Savior? I mean, it breaks my heart when I hear of others going to drugs, alcohol, weed, whatever it is, or going to their doctors getting the, the, this amazing pill to fix their problems when Jesus wants to help us with our problems. When Jesus is working and, and he's doing great things. Man, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart that we make the world bigger than what it is. We give it more credit. And yet Jesus is here taking demons, many demons, multiple demons, legion out of this man. I mean, he has the power and authority to do so. Do we lean on him? Do we trust him? Or that point one there was that do we welcome demons? Do we welcome demons? Do we greet the demons? Jesus greeted the demons. Point two is that we're bound up, right? Some of us are really bound up by the demons and the things going on of this world. I think of this man, how he was so bound up to the point where he had no reality that he was running around naked, had no clothes on, no shame, wouldn't go home, right? He was living in tombs when he has a home and in a, in a bed. But he was so bound up, he was so taken over that he had, he had the freedoms taken out from underneath him. And I go, y'all, some of us are no different. We're so bound up with everything going on. Maybe we're so bound up and we're so busy and we're so consumed with our job that we're bound up and we're not listening to the work of the Holy Spirit. Or whether it's at home or whether it's, it's with our community. Sometimes we can be so bound up. Maybe we're so bound up with, with money. Some of us are so bound up with drugs and addictions and, and sexual attractions and we get so bound up in our heads because the world seems so enticing that we're not living for Jesus. This man could not live for Jesus because he was so bound up by these demons because the world had him taken over. Man, are we not, or do we not, some of us fall into this category where we're, we're so pursuing everything else other than Jesus? And some of us feel so bound, we feel that we can't pursue Jesus because we're so bound by it. Because we allow the sin to entice us and to hold us back. We're, we're bound by our sin nature. Man, I think as Christmas is coming up and we're, we're, so many people are chasing the new this, the new bells and whistles, whether it's the new iPhone 15, uh, whatever that is, right? The, the, new, the new car, the new purse, the, the new fish tank with the bells and whistles. Now y'all are talking to me now. Whew. Let, let, where's this one at? Tell me what website's on. I'm going to go check it out. But, but we're so bound up by it, right? You know that old term, you know, that dangling carrot, which I never understood because who wants to eat a carrot? Like, what? A dangling carrot? And I, I took a bunny trail on this, so I won't tell you about all that. Uh, but I was like, the dangling carrot. That gets us distracted, right? Whoops. But it's true. We as believers, we can do the same thing. We can be chasing 
and, and going after and, and we forget about Jesus and what he's doing. We get so bound up with we have to be caught up in the season of, of the worldly Christmas that we have to deliver. We have to deliver to our kids and we have to deliver to our grandkids and we have to get them this, we have to get them that. And, and we, we really help them get distracted with the world. Our hearts and our minds are so imbalanced. We're so deeply distracted by what the world offers that we're not looking at the restoring, redeeming grace of Jesus Christ. We're not looking and we're not focusing on the authority and the goodness of our Savior. And it's so easy to be distracted with the world. Man, it, it is so easily... It is so easy to be enticed and taken over and be bound by the distractions of the world. And the more we give our hearts over to the world, the more it has of us. Right? The more we give ourselves of the world, the more it has of us. And we're leaving ourselves open to the spiritual realm. Man, that's what scared me this week of going, man, what are we opening ourselves heart to to the world and we always know it's slowly. It's little bit by little bit by little bit. And now we have the whole picture, right? And we're opening ourselves spiritually to the world. And we're allowing Satan to do a mighty work in us because we let our guards down. Because we're not, we're not in the word. We're not praying. We're not gathering. We're not encouraging each other. We're not sharpening each other. We're getting distracted ourselves. Man, I, I just can't believe that a man can be possessed by demons. That a man would allow himself to give pest, pes, pes, I, can't, I can't talk this morning. Taken over by demons, that's the word. Taken over by demons. Man, that just blows my mind. That, that someone would allow themselves slowly to be just taken over, to not even see it before it's too late. Verse 30, Jesus asked him, saying, What is your name? And he said, Legion. Because of many demons had entered him. And they begged him that he would not command them to go out into the abyss. Now a herd of the swine were feeding there on the mountains. So they begged him that he would not permit them to... He begged him that he would, he would permit them to enter them. And he permitted them. Then the demons went out of the man and entered the swine and the herd that ran violently down the steep place in the lakes and drowned. Now, I kind of had to pause for a minute. I kind of wondered if Jesus didn't like bacon. That was the first thing that came to my mind. That he must have been a vegetarian because he didn't like pigs. It had to, there isn't any other answer, right? He didn't say, hey, go into the bug that was flying by or the herd of ants that were, you know, probably on the ground, right? He threw them into the pigs those poor pigs, I'm, I'm just telling you, I'm, I just was like, wow, Jesus did not like pigs. He had something against them. So I'm sorry, Joe, that you like bacon. Um, they, and you got to think, they must not have had any value, right? He knew he was going to send them over the cliff. So the pigs didn't have any value to Jesus. You know, he saved the man, but not the pigs. So uh, again, pig, there's something about these pigs. I just couldn't. Couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. Never will here. But, but I look at this man that Jesus, that we know about Jesus, that Jesus wanted to renew this man. That Jesus wanted to restore him. Cleanse him, renew him, get rid of the demons that was in this man. That this one man had enough value to go after. That this one man had enough value to go after to get rid of the demons that are within him. This one man had enough to go share the gospel, to go share the good news of what Jesus, this is one man we're talking about. He cleansed him and renewed him to get rid of this, that he had value, that had value versus the pigs, to throw the demons into the swine over the cliff. I mean, I just, I just processed the value of one person. Do we ever think about valuing one person? Because sometimes when we think of one person, we go, man, this one person is a great sinner. 
This one person, we've got to think this man was running around naked and everyone knew it, right? And he was living in tombs. Like we're talking about a wild, a wild man. Right? Some people would say, I wouldn't go near him, good luck, right? A lot of people would say he doesn't have any value, let him go. But Jesus got out of the boat and, and, and spent time and ministered to this one man who had value and purpose to go share the good news. Man, there was value in to pause and to share the good news with this one person. And I go, y'all, that's not Jesus, because it, was that, would that be Thomas? Would that be you? That Jesus paused and got out of the boat and ministered to you in your flesh? Because you were taken over? Man, I really had to pause there that Jesus had value into this man. There was value here that he stopped and he did what he did. And I just, it just amazes me. And then I stopped and, and I was thinking about how, how did this man get taken over? Where was his heart? Was he so distracted with all that the world offers? I mean, this man was possessed. He was possessed. He was taken over by the garbage of the world, by, by, by Satan and, 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 and his demons. That this man was, was up to it. And some of us, with the whole carrot dangling, right? Some of us, we go, oh, this show isn't that bad, right? There's, only, there's, there's less swear words than the last one I watched, right? So it's okay, right? We give ourselves over just slowly, right? It's not that bad, right? I've seen those who just get into the, just the, the TV shows and the, just giving themselves over to it. What about music? Man, teenagers. I, I remember working with teenagers. They never wanted to talk about music. They're like, that, it's not bad to listen to bad music. And I said, yes, it is. What's going in is coming out. They're like, but it's not that bad. And I'm like, so what's, what's the terminology of not that bad? Like... Like, just you picking and choosing? Y'all, do you ever think about the things you listen to and the things you watch are the things that's penetrating your heart and that you're okay with? You know, I think about all the nasty nicks, even the, oh, the Marvel and all that. There's so much demonic within that that we, we accept and we welcome ourselves into it. I mean, I knew Christian brothers and sisters who would go out and watch these paranormal movies that are coming out that, that Hollywood puts out there. I mean, this to me is like, are you really going to open yourself up to the demonic world? Like, you, why would you want to go even be interested in some of this garbage? That you would open your heart and your minds to this is what blows my mind. I mean, I'm talking about other believers are going, yeah, it's okay to go watch this stuff. And I go, wow, Why? Why would you open yourself to this? But then I look at this man and that Jesus had value and he stopped and he paused and he ministered even in his, in his sin and in his, where he was spiritually. That Jesus stopped and he ministered to him. And I go, y'all, that's some of us. Some of us are in so much garbage and nastiness that Jesus is still ministering to us. And that Jesus has the authority and the power to minister to our souls that we can't do. Right? The helpless estate, this man who was helpless that was taken over, he had no power and no authority. He was being completely controlled, but Jesus had the power and authority to do so. That to me is, man, I, woo, that's awesome. That Jesus can refresh us and Jesus can renew us and create in us anew and give us joy of the Lord. He can take a dead heart and revive it. He can take a heart that's being taken over and He can cleanse it. He can renew it. Y'all, that's what I get excited about. Talking about music, man, I know the radios right now are only playing Christmas music on the Christian radio stations. I could tell you because they've been on at my house. Let me tell you, woo! I mean, yesterday morning, we 88.5 from uh, Kansas City. We were listening to the radio station, and sure enough, they were playing Christmas music, getting me all pumped up at breakfast time. 
Man, Mary, did you know that your baby boy? Mary, did you know that your baby boy? I mean, we're just talking about just renewing and, and how we can focus our hearts and minds towards Jesus. Y'all want to encourage you to, to really encourage yourself to push yourselves towards the things that are of God. Things that are noble and pure and worthy. To, to press towards those things. Press towards the things that is going to encourage your soul. Don't watch and listen to all that garbage out there. 2 Corinthians 4.14 Knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sake. The grace have spread through the many and may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Man, that's Jesus renewing our inward heart. It's Jesus renewing us. Our outward is perishing, as you can see, I'm bald. Um, it's perishing, but the inward is being renewed day by day. That's why we get into his word. That's why we gather, and that's why we, we come to Sunday school and, and church, and we, we come together as much as possible so we can encourage each other, sharpen each other, Point each other to Jesus and let Jesus renew our heart. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who have reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation that is the God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing those trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Man, reconciliation is, is the Lord renewing our souls, re renewing us, rejuvenating us from old to new. Man, we have been reconciled, we've been renewed, we've been refreshed in the Lord. Man, when this man went back home, I, he was renewed and he was pumped up. Man, he was ready. Man, you can tell I love as you get, into the, you get into this passage and you can see, man, he wanted to stay with Jesus. Jesus, let me stay with you. Man, let me be at your feet. And let me learn and let me keep. I want more knowledge and understanding. Man, you, you are it. But Jesus says, no, you're going to go back home and share. You're going to go back and share the good news of the gospel. You're going to go and, and go tell because why? Because his heart has been renewed and he's a changed man. I mean, y'all, have you thought about that? Your heart has been renewed and refreshed and there's a joy within you to be sharing the good news of the gospel. And then we give that authority to Jesus to allow Jesus to change hearts for the gospel. Man, we're here to plant the seeds and then we let Jesus renew it. Because he has the authority and the power to do so. But by golly that he even lets us to be a part of that is amazing to me. That you all can get to share your story and where you're at. You get to share what God has done in your life. And to share that good news. And, and you share that with someone. And Jesus will be the one that gets to water that. And that's in his timing. And that's, that's in his work. Do we see that? Verse 36, They also who had seen it told them by which means he had been demon-possessed and was healed, that the whole multitude of the surrounding region of the... Man, I keep saying this wrong. The Gadardinias asked him to depart from them, and for they were seized with great fear and had got into the boat and returned. And so they, they had great fear, Right? And so I stopped here and I looked at this and they, they, were almost, they were fearful of what Jesus was doing. They were fearful of the gospel going forth. They were fearful of what they've seen and what was going on. And I go, sometimes when we share the good news that some people will run. Sometimes people will run and, and they're... they're 
They don't want Jesus to come into their life because they feel they already got it all made. It's all perfect. They don't want anything to be messed up because their little world is amazing. They're okay with the way they are. They're okay with where they're at. I mean, that's Satan distracting them, saying that they're okay, but yet they keep wanting more and more of whatever they have. That it's not enough. There was a time where I remember uh, in Kansas City, this, this keeps coming to me, is we were in Kansas City, and there was a neighbor right across from the church, and uh, he owned the car wash in town. And uh, I would talk to him, and I would say hi. And we, had, we, we started to build this relationship. So one day the Holy Spirit said, you need to go tell him. I was like, oh, I don't want to go tell him. What? He's somebody else. I'm, I'm taking out the trash right now. So I took out the trash, and I'm talking to him across the street, and I walk over into his yard, and I'm talking to him. And I just, I said, hey, I, I, I just, hey, I want to talk to you about church. And he said, stop right there. And he just, he got really loud and got really bold and says, whatever you're going to tell me, I don't, I don't want to hear about the church. And I went, whoa. And I remember just turning around and leaving because I didn't know what to do next after that. Because you don't often run into that conflict. And I go, was I that scared of not finishing telling what the man, what, was, what he needed to hear? And so I remember later on, I seen him at the car wash. Um, and I said, hey, I just wanted to invite you to church and know about Jesus. And he says, I already know about Jesus. I don't want it. And so he says, we can be friends, but don't talk to me about church stuff. And I go, wow, this man was so hardened that he didn't want anything to do with it. Man, that broke my heart. That he lives right across from the church and he wants nothing to do with it. He wants nothing to do with it. That he's so bold and he's so confident that he doesn't want it that he'd tell you straight to your face. And I just remembered, I think that was one of the first times that I had that much conflict trying to share Jesus with someone and I really didn't know what to do because it was like, well, they didn't teach this one in Bible college. <laughs> like, uh, you just pause and you're like, Okay, just turn around. I still remember just turning around and leaving. Just pop. Okay, see ya. Because I was like, I don't know what to say now. I'm, I'm, I'm puzzled. I was ready to keep going. But I go, I think about this, this passage here that they were, they were fearful. They were seized with great fear and, he, and they got into the boat and they returned. That some people do not want to hear the good news. They see it, but they don't want it. That, that just puzzles me. That puzzles me. Let's look at verse 38. Now the man from whom the demons had, depart, had departed begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, return to your own house with great things of God has done for you. And he went his way and proclaimed throughout the whole city with what great things Jesus has done for him. Y'all, have you ever thought that Jesus has a plan for your life? Have you thought that Jesus has done great things in your life and he wants you to go tell people about him? Have you thought about your, the plan that the Lord has for you and how you're going to be obedient to the will of the Lord? Because sometimes, right, this man, he thought his will was to stay with Jesus. Jesus, let me stay underneath your teachings. Let me stay with you. I'll just, I just want to hang out with you just that much more. And Jesus said, no, I want you to go tell. I want you to go. And he did. And this, this was the will for him to go forth and to go back home and, and to go tell others. And I thought it was interesting that he's, he's gone to the disciples and say, come with me, leave it. Leave the dead to bury the dead. You come with me. And we're going to go share the gospel. And this man wants to do that. He just wants to sit underneath Jesus. And he just tells him, no, you're, not go you're going to go back home and share the gospel. Man, are we willing to even go back home and share the gospel? Are we willing to tell others around us about the goodness of our Savior? Think about that. Are we, are we willing to tell others about the hope that we have? The renewing, the joy that we have in our hearts. Man, are we willing to tell others about it? Because I could say that maybe this man wasn't gifted in evangelism, right? He didn't say, oh, Jesus, I'm not gifted in evangelism. You know, you didn't title me evangelism on my forehead. I don't have the word deacon or elder up here. I can't go tell people about Jesus. You didn't give me the title pastor, so I can't tell people about Jesus. No, he just, he went and did it. 
He didn't say, hey, Jesus, wait a second, I'm not dressed right, right? You know, he went from naked to clothed. So he could say, well, Jesus, you can't use me. Remember, I was possessed by demons. I'm a, I'm a sinner too. You can't use me. He didn't come up. I don't see any excuses in this passage where this man says, use somebody else. But the Lord used him in a mighty way. I had to stop and think this week of y'all, are, are, do we hold ourselves back from the joy that Jesus wants us to share with someone else, to share that light, the past, the baton of salvation per se, are we willing to go share the joy of Jesus Christ? Are we willing to go share, are we willing to go back and to share the good news? Or do we, or do we create these, Jesus, go use someone else. I'm not gifted, per se. I'm not gifted with this, so I can't do it. I'm not gifted with that, per se. I can't do it. Are we willing to go do it? Are we willing to go share the gospel, the good news, Y'all, and sometimes we get so overwhelmed with this part. Oh my gosh, what am I going to say? How am I going to say it, right? Is a guy like Thomas had, you know, like he's just going to tell him to stop right there. Like you have, we have this conflict sometimes inside. But what I've learned when I'm sharing, I just share my story. Because I can't argue with my story. Hey, can I tell you, man, when I was 13 years old and man, I was really struggling and God did some cool things in my life. Most of the time they say, yeah, if they're not in a hurry, right, in this society. Man, you can tell them your story. And I'm sure you all have some pretty cool stories, right? I know I've heard a little piece of David Wood's story. Man, that's a pretty neat story. I mean, if you don't have time to listen to that story, you've got problems. Man, we all have interesting stories in this room. I don't even know everyone's story in this room. Man, we're going to have, we're going to have, maybe we should have like a, a Sunday where everyone gets up here and tells their story, right? Louie's getting up here. I knew it. I knew I would get Louie up here and his wonderful wife. I knew it. She's coming up too. Get that microphone ready. I think we got about, what, an hour left? <laughs> Just kidding, Louie. I can see their eyes back there looking at me. Pick someone else next Sunday, Louie's saying. But it's true, man. Are we willing to just share our story, what Jesus did in our hearts? Man, we're just telling about how Jesus came into our life that is real and tangible in what he did in our lives and that we're, we're, we're moving, man, he's reconciled us. He's renewed us. Man, we're not perfect. We still struggle. We still, we still trip, right? We still want more fish tanks, right? No, I didn't see anyone nod their head. Yes, they want more fish tanks. I don't know what's wrong with y'all. But, but we can still lean into the Lord. And we can still share the joy of how he's working and he's moving. Y'all, people need to hear about the good news. People need to hear the truth and the seed of the gospel. Man, I think of a, a gentleman that came to my house last night. Man, I just, we got to share a piece of Jesus' goodness with him. Man, we just, that's all we're called to do is to share the good news and to share it. Now, some of us might be more bold than others, right? Some of us are, are, are gifted in that area. Man, we can just, we're gifted in being bold, and some of us are more timid, and so be you in Christ, but share. Men, share your story and let the Lord use that for his glory. Men, use that. And I love the part as we share the gospel is it's not us, it's not up to us to save anybody. Because I don't have the power and I don't have the authority. But my job is to share it. And we know from the Savior of Jesus' heart in this passage, he wants to renew and he wants to minister. And I just think of the lost people here in Matthews. Jesus is wanting them to come to faith. Because he died for them. He bled his, shut, he bled his, his body and his, he bled for them. He died for them. That they would be renewed. And so maybe that's us constantly sharing our story. And as we share our story, that they would, that the, that the Spirit and, and Jesus would minister to them in that time. Man, He has the power and authority to do so. That's what I want you all to see today, is that Jesus has the power and authority over our physical and over the spiritual world. And that Jesus is going to minister, because that's what He's out to do. That's, that's our Savior. Is he's here to renew us. Man, that's what we're learning in Sunday school from age to age, that Jesus is showing his grace in the Old Testament from each age and each time as it goes and it, 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 
it furthers or progresses. I don't know the right word I'm looking for here. But Jesus is constantly showing his grace and his goodness. And that's still true today. That he's still revealing his grace and his goodness over and over and over again. Y'all, and the cool thing apart that is I want to encourage you is that you get to be a part of that. That Jesus wants to use you to be a part of that by sharing the good news. Man, if you're not sharing the good news, it's kind of hard to be a part of that. If you're not sharing that, and you say, well, maybe I don't have any opportunities. Well, go find some opportunities, right? Like maybe go, when you go get gas, go in the gas station. Don't just pay at the pump. Man, there's so many opportunities that you can, you can find opportunities. Man, when you go in the grocery store, go look for opportunities. Man, you can find it. It's there. Like one time I was at the gym and, and I was with another church member and someone came to our table and wanted to talk to us. Man, he was already a believer that we could per se, but he just wanted to, he seen us praying and he wanted to be a part of that. We had a God conversation around a round table. Man, go look for it. Man, he will, he will reveal himself in it. You know, there are so many neat God moments. We just have to open ourselves to it, right? We have to be willing to be a part of the God conversations that Jesus wants to use. Man, it's constantly out there. But are we willing to share his truth and his story? So as we come into conclusion, is point one is that... Um, that the demons here were greeting. They were greeting Jesus. They were right there at the shore and they were ready. And so what, what scares me is that do we entertain demons in our own lives? Are we entertaining the world, demons? Think about that. For your, for your own personal walk, are you entertaining that? Point two, think about this man that was bound up. Are you any way in your walk with the Lord, are you bound up? Are you bound up with with the distractions that the world offers, whether it's, whether it's work or home or sin or stress or the storms that you're going through, is it has you so bound up that you, you're not walking freely. You're not walking in your faith and obedience freely to the Savior, but are you so bound that you, you just can't get past it? I mean, I've been where I've, I, I'm in work mode and I just want to work and I got work to do and I, got, I just got to work, right? I'm bound up by it. I'm not set free. I have no freedom because I'm so bound up, right? right? Home projects. Sometimes we can be so bound up, we have no freedom, right? Some of us in our marriages, we're so bound up that we're not listening to the work and the leading of the Holy Spirit. So I want you to, as you work through this, search your hearts. Are you a little bound up? Are you a little caught up in the world's distractions? Three, I mean, that Jesus cast out the demons in this man. That Jesus sees value in human life. Jesus sees value in this man. That we should look at others with value. Are we willing to share the gospel with others around us? Are we willing to share the good news? Are we just caught up with the world? Man, are we willing to share the good news? Y'all, and I want to encourage you to practice sharing your story. I don't know if you need help. If you need help writing it out, man, I'd love to work with you and we could, we could even write it out. If you need help with that, help processing it, right? Because we're not trying to brag about our sin nature. Man, that was the best sinner there ever was, let me tell you. Right? Some of us... Our story is 10 minutes of how amazing sinner we are. We get saved. Yep, I'm good. Man, I am just living for Jesus. And we really need to lengthen that part and how the Lord's working and ministering and the joy and the peace that we have and make that longer and make the whole sinner part shorter. You know, if you need help with that, please call me. I would I'd love to work with you and hear your story. And, and uh, I want you to practice your story. And so is that maybe practice with your spouse or practice with another church member? Practice your story. Because that's your story. And, and, and the Lord wants to use your story to plant seeds for the gospel. So let me pray, and then we'll sing the last song we'll be dismissed. Dear Lord, we thank you so much 
that you looked on this one man and you seen that he was taken over with demons and that you reconciled his soul, that you renewed him, that you cleansed him, that you, you got rid of the demons. Lord, is there anyone in this room that is so distracted with the world per se that they're not living in the freedom that we have in Christ. This man had no freedom. He was fully taken over. He couldn't walk where he wanted to walk. He couldn't sleep where he wanted to sleep. And some of us are no different. We can't sleep at night because of the stress and the worries of the world. We're overtaken. Lord, help us to lean on to you. Lord, just this morning, those that just, I'm, my heart's taken for those who are burdened with, with drugs. They lean on drugs to, to help them get over of the miseries of the world. Lord, help them to lean into Jesus. That we have a peace and a joy in the Lord. Lord, help us as believers to shine our light bright for you. We should have a smile on our face because of the joy of the Lord, what he's done in our hearts. Lord, help us to shine bright, Lord. Lord, give us opportunities to share your good news. Lord, I believe that you can truly change this whole town of Matthews without a doubt. Lord, but use us first. Cause a revival right here within this church to renew our hearts, to go forth and to make a difference. Lord, use this, community, this church and this community to make a difference for the joy of the Lord. Lord, let this community know that Jesus is alive and he's well and he's moving. Lord, let us get pumped up about you and your gospel and your good news and your word. Lord, I just thank you for renewing us. Lord, we don't give you enough praise and enough credit so that you have renewed our hearts. You've renewed our hearts from, from dirt, ugly, and nastiness, and you've renewed us. You swept it off and you've cleaned us with your blood. So, Lord, we thank you for that. Amen. Amen.